Hey everyone, I wanted to let you know that while researching the Battle of Carhai, I actually encountered a really fascinating hypothesis, which claims that the Roman prisoners of war actually ended up all the way in China, with a line of descendants that can still be seen today. This was way too crazy of an idea not to follow up on, so that's what we'll be doing today. Let's start first with what we know. While well, in 53 BC, Crassus and his legions were defeated by the Parthians. It was one of Rome's worst defeats due to the sheer amount of men lost. Apparently, of the approximately 40,000 soldiers, 20,000 were killed and 10,000 were captured. It's this last group that we'll be focusing on today. The victorious general Serranus routed up these prisoners and brought them back to Seleucia to be paraded through the streets in triumph. While Rome made several demands for the return of the legions and their eagles, these fell on deaf ears. Pliny records that the POWs were then actually transported to the borders of modern Afghanistan in the city of Merv. However, we are told nothing of their supposed 1500 mile journey or following captivity. I find it pretty hard to believe that the Parthians would actually bother to transport this many men this far away. If there is some truth to it, it's probably more likely that these prisoners of war were shuffled along some eastern route with men being dispersed along the way. In fact, we do actually have some hints of prisoners who stayed closer to home. During Antony's invasion in 36 BC, Florus tells us that the legions were actually met by a survivor of Carhai who rode into their camp wearing Parthian clothes and speaking Latin. Perhaps some prisoners actually defected to the Parthians rather than making the long journey we've heard about. Yet we shouldn't get too carried away with this since the event is not actually corroborated by our other sources. Even if none of Crassus' legionary prisoners were present, Antony's campaign would face its own defeat and in turn produce more POWs for the Parthians. But then there's some radio silence until 20 BC when we next hear of the Roman prisoners. In this case, Augustus had finally negotiated his monumental peace treaty with the Parthians, which actually negotiated their return. Dio tells us that the Parthian king, quote, returned all the prisoners of war, except for those who had taken their own lives out of shame or else had managed to escape detection and had hidden in the country." End quote. According to our records, this is then where the story ends. But since this happened 33 years after Carhai and 16 years after Antony's defeat, I find it unlikely that that many of the POWs would actually have made it back into Roman lands. In fact, the poet Horace actually speculates that many simply settled down in the east. However, the mystery which surrounds the final chapter of the POW story brings us to the start of this very video, with that fascinating hypothesis. Perhaps some of these unaccounted Romans went east rather than west. So let's now turn back to the original idea, that these Roman POWs actually made it all the way to China. This unorthodox hypothesis was originally proposed by Homer Dubbs, a scholar working out of Oxford in the 1950s. Apparently, the idea started when he examined Chinese records dating back to 5 AD. The imperial documents he was looking at recorded a town named Lijian, whose locals today show Caucasian traits. From this data point, Dubbs then poured through history to dig up a connection back to the west. He proposed the following story. Apparently, Roman prisoners who had been transported to the city of Merv must have at some point been released or escaped. These then turned to mercenary work in Central Asia. Next, at some point, they were supposed to have been employed by the Zhongnu chieftain Zhizhi Chanyubi, who was at that point embroiled in a war with the Han Dynasty. In 36 BC, the two forces fought in a battle near Taraz in modern Kazakhstan. Chronicles of the battle state that among the foot soldiers that lined up, about 100 stood out due to their fish scale formation. Dubs argues that this was the famous Roman legionary Testudo thus drawing the connection between the Roman prisoners we heard about earlier and this distant battle, somehow linking the two with this very vague reference. Anyways, the story next continues by citing the ancient chronicle, which states that after a hard-fought battle, the Zhongnu were defeated. So again, back to this hypothesis, these Roman soldiers, and I put in quotes Roman soldiers, were then once again taken prisoner. And then next, the jump that takes place is that these were shuffled over into China, and then founded the settlement of Lijian. This is, you know, another gap between data points, and in this case, the connection being made here is kind of vague. It seems that Dubs here is either trying to link Lijian to the word Legion, 
just because of the way it sounds similar, or apparently due to some vague references that Li Jian was apparently a term used to describe the faraway Roman people by the Chinese. The final bit of evidence to this whole story is that the locals living near this ancient town exhibit Caucasian traits. So where does that leave us? Well, we only have a couple extremely unconvincing pieces to support the hypothesis as a whole. The fish scale formation reference is extremely vague, and the parallels between Li Zhen and the Legion are laughably coincidental. And finally, the Caucasian traits of the Chinese people can be derived from a myriad of other ancestries other than the Romans, who were actually in the first century not likely to even display these traits. It should be pretty obvious that this entire narrative is built on extremely speculative ground where disparate bits of information have been forced to fit a story. This is perfect material for a conspiracy, but has no place in history. Yet this hasn't stopped the story from spreading across the internet, or even stopped the Chinese locals from embracing the narrative as a way to attract tourists. Nonetheless, I don't entirely want to rule out a Roman-Chinese connection, as we certainly have records of one. But we'll be discussing this, more legitimate history, in another video. So I hope you enjoyed this one, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.